Welcome to Bedtime History. Hello, this is Breck. Our story starts in the year 1920 with a sculptor and mountain carver named Gutzen Borglum. Gutzen travels around the United States, carving things out of stone for people. He's married and has a daughter, Mary, and a son, Lincoln. Lincoln loves to spend time with his father, learning all sorts of things, like how to carve clay, how to chisel stone, and which tools to use for each. One day, Gutzen meets with two men to discuss a mountain carving project. They want Gutzen to carve a Wild West scene into a mountain as a tourist attraction. A tourist attraction is an interesting place where people can go to take pictures and have fun. Gutzen studies the mountains up close. Uh Uh-oh, this doesn't look good. The rocks are loose and chip away easily. This mountain will not be a good mountain to carve, but he has a better idea. Why not carve the faces of some of America's best presidents into a mountain? That would be even more patriotic, meaning lots of Americans would feel very proud of it. Everyone agrees. Gutzen travels around the valleys and mountains on horseback, looking for the perfect mountain to carve. The rock has to be just right. It has to be very strong so that it will last for years in good and bad weather, including fierce storms and lightning strikes. He certainly doesn't want the faces sliding off the side of the mountain. Gutzen creates drawings. He decides to carve three presidents' faces into the mountain, President Washington, Lincoln, and Jefferson. But when Gutzen visits the White House in Washington, D.C., one day he talks to President Coolidge. They agree to add President Roosevelt to the mountain as well. Gutzen actually knows President Roosevelt and really likes him. Wow, this is going to be a lot of work to add another face. Can you imagine carving three gigantic faces into a mountain, much less four? Gutzen draws lots of sketches and makes miniature models in clay and stone. Finally, the day arrives to start carving the mountain. A big party is held in the valley on August 10th, 1927. President Coolidge comes to the party and makes a nice speech. The Lakota Indians dance to the beat of drums. Their feather headdresses swing in the breeze. Gutzen's son, Lincoln, watches as his dad edges over the top of the mountain in a harness attached to ropes while holding a large drill. His dad starts drilling into the rock and everyone cheers. Lincoln is a little scared, watching his father so high up on the mountain, but is also very proud. Gutzen hires lots of local workmen, carpenters and lumbermen, and stonecutters to help him. They build over 500 wooden steps up the side of the mountain to carry supplies to the top. They build houses and workshops in the valley and a small village on top of the mountain. The mountaintop village makes it quicker to get to the work site than climbing up all those steps from the valley. They also build a shed to store dynamite. Yes, they'll need lots of dynamite to blast away parts of the mountain. Lincoln loves hearing those loud booms bounce back and forth across the valley like a big echo chamber. Boom! 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 They're so loud they even rattle the windows in town. Gutzen tells Lincoln he's going to carve a secret room inside the mountain, behind the heads of the presidents, to store important papers. It will be a secret hiding place. Lincoln can't wait to sneak around that room. Maybe he can peek out of Lincoln's eye or Washington's nose. Working with his dad is an adventure every day. The carving takes a very long time. Years of carving and drilling and blowing up bits of the mountain. But the faces start to show, like giants poking their faces out of a huge sandbox. As the years pass, Lincoln learns many skills by watching his dad and the workers. They show him how to transfer measurements from tiny clay models to the side of the mountain. He learns how to make the carved faces shiny and smooth. He even learns how to use a dynamite to blast away the rock to make an eye, a nose, or even a pair of glasses. They dynamite the mountains two times a day. That's a lot of explosions. The poor folks in the valley, it must have driven them crazy. But one day they realize there's a big problem. After a year and a half of working on the mountain, Gutzen and Lincoln discover that the rock around Jefferson's face is bad. It's not a good section of the mountain. What are they going to do? They know they have to start all over again in another spot. They're very sad, but they can't leave the half-finished face peering out of the mountain so they use dynamite to blow it off. All that work is now gone. The men continue to work through rain and snow and lightning strikes. One day Lincoln even has to swing on ropes under the president's nose to avoid being hit by lightning. Who knew a nose could be so handy? 
The winters are hard and long. Gutsen and Lincoln give a herd of buffalo to the members of the Lakota tribe so they have something to eat. The Lakotas are so happy they dance all night and make Gutsen and Lincoln blood brothers of the tribe. The work continues until 1941, when Gutsen goes to the hospital for a minor operation. Sadly, there are complications and he passes away suddenly. Lincoln's very sad. He never got to say goodbye to his father, and he thinks that his father's dreams will go with him. But instead, Lincoln is named head sculptor by the crew, and becomes the boss of his father's project at only 29 years old. But Lincoln knows that money and time are running out. He decides he cannot make the secret room behind the president's faces. He'll never get to complete his childhood dream of staring out of a president's eye or nose. Oh well, sometimes you have to give up some things to get the job done. In the year 1941, on Halloween, the work is finally finished, and the four presidents' faces shine brightly from the side of the mountain. Lincoln and the workmen are so happy and proud. They place a wreath at the foot of Mount Rushmore to honor Gutzen, who never lived long enough to see his famous project come to completion. After 14 years of hard work by Gutzen, his son, and 400 workmen, Mount Rushmore shines brightly across the Black Hills of South Dakota for all to see. I hope you enjoyed this episode about Mount Rushmore. Be sure to tune in next Monday for a new episode.